आर्काइव्स ऑफ प्रसार भारती प्रेजेंट्स द टाइमलेस ट्रेजर ऑफ गोल्डन एरा गुड आफ्टरनून एनवी गुड आफ्टरनून यू आर नियरिंग योर 70th बर्थडे मे बी फॉर्चूनेटली टू अस बिकॉज़ इट इज एन ओकेशन टू सेलिब्रेट एज पोएट एज क्रिटिक एज स्कॉलर एज अ पॉलिटिकल एक्टिविस्ट एज अ प्रोग्रामर ऑफ ग्रेट कल्चरल प्रोजेक्ट्स यू हैव made signal contribution to the cultural life and the intellectual life of the country and to people of my generation you are a legend you have presented an image and just like a poetic image we are curious about you we would like to know about your background your personal life the influences that have shaped your personality and your major fields of activity shall we ask a few questions yes first about the family and the community background in which you were born and brought up as you know warriors of kerala formed a hindu subcaste traditionally associated with temple worship rites the cluster of antarala or intermediate caste known as also as ambalavasis or temple dwellers being in charge of various minor functions in the village temples which were not only places of religious worship but were also the centers of village administration these communities occupied a peculiar place in the socio cultural hindu rural life in kerala extremely subservient to the namputris who often had sambandham or a sort of loose marital alliance with their women these antarala or intermediate communities though often very poor were educated in traditional laws and were held in considerable esteem by the non brahmin hindu communities the family in which i was born in the year 1960 was attached to a very small village temple known as neru kaul situated about 2 miles to the east of the big peruvanam temple on the eastern slope of a small hill skirted by fertile paddy fields watered by karvanur river the temple of nirukava was being administered by a group of namputiri trustees called uralers now the most important of two families of these trustees namely vaidigan kaplingar and moolail perumbadapp were related to our family by sambandham alliances and we were normally spared of much of the nambudiri tyranny to which members of the antarala communities were frequently subjected now what do you mean by that nambudiri tyranny well being landlords and also occupying the highest position in the hierarchy they could extract anything from most of the hindu communities especially the non brahmin community have you been subjected to any such experience well, i can recollect something that uh, has relation to my very first bursting forth into print as a student i wrote a letter to a newspaper about an incident which took place in our village many of our temples were burglared and a few utensils and uh, ornaments of the deities were pilfered so unknown persons the police intervened with no result then the trustee of uh, some of these temples ordered that the those who worked in these temples the brahmins who performed the poojas and the ampalavasis who performed the karagam rites they should make good the laws this was unjust and uh, my first letter to a newspaper was based on this incidentally was it your first article published yes that was uh, my first uh, published article a cry against injustice yes then after a few months the thing came out and uh, the kairistans of the trustees called my father who was working under them in a temple my father approached me and asked me to tender an apology this i had to do 
Uh, that is a sort of a minor experience of uh, this sort of gen meter running, which I had personally experienced myself. I would like to know about family of your parents, your father, maternal and paternal sides. Yes, maternal grandfather, I shall start from there, was a Shivahalli Tulu Brahmin. He had left his home in Puttur Taluk, in present Karnataka state, when he was only 13 years old. And thereafter, he never went back to his village. Though illiterate, he could perform pujas in temples. Wandering aimlessly, he came to our place, obtained a priesthood in some of the temples, and gradually formed a sambandham alliance with the woman who became my grandmother. Thrifty and industrious, he could manage to earn a few thousand rupees through years. When my grandmother and her sister had to separate from their main family, the earnings of my grandfather were put to good use. He bought a plot of land, built a house, and that was how my family was established. My grandmother gave birth to six daughters. They, in their turn, were also very exceptionally fertile, I may say. While I was a boy, there were about a hundred members living under the roof of my maternal house. This was a matriarchal family, you know, and the properties under matriarchal system were considered impartible. I think this is the theme of one of your poems, uh -huh. The Trees and the Creepers. That theme also comes there. In that I refer to the life I lived in my childhood, in my old family. And the auntie uh -huh. whose skin was lustrous like gold. That is. <laughs> then my mother was the fifth daughter of my grandmother. She had not had any schooling, for there were no schools in the neighborhood at that time. Yet she could write Malayalam and uh, was an avid reader of epics and Puranas in Malayalam. She was also interested in reading Malayalam fiction. In her physical features, she resembled her Brahmin father. She was fair, slim and beautiful. The family of my father, Achuda Warrior, was attached to a temple called Pidike Parambu under the trusteeship of the Nambudiri family of Deshamangala. My father was also the son of a Nambudiri Brahmin and uh, he had two elder brothers, elder sisters and a younger brother. It was a very small family, unlike my own maternal family. My father too had no schooling, yet he could write good Malayalam, new elements of Sanskrit, could maintain accounts and was steeped in worldly wisdom. Because of the unusual maturity of his views and expressions, his close friends used to call him teasingly the old one. For a few years, he worked as a kairisthan or manager in a couple of wealthy Nambudri families and a warrior family. Relinquishing these jobs, which were never very remunerative, he confined himself to work in his family farm which consisted of a small coconut grove and a few acres of paddy field. It was mostly back-breaking physical labor. The commodities were undervalued. As the ownership of property vested with a family, of which the nominal member, head, was his elder sister, and the actual head was her husband, my father could not earn from this exertion enough to meet his private needs. For some time, he also ventured into commerce, bought paddy from farmers, stored it and sold when it fetched a higher price. But lacking sufficient funds, this enterprise landed him in considerable debt. He was fond of bullocks and bought at intervals good pairs of bullocks for agricultural purposes. This was a very extensive hobby in those times. Having deep convictions about the matriarchal moors, what little he earned, he added to the family property and refused to receive his share of it, even when individual partition of joint family properties became the normal practice. The result of all this was that he could not earn 
much while he was young could not provide for his wife and children when they needed such providing and had to depend on his children who were themselves very poor in his old age i am the third son of my parents though my brother immediately above me had died as an infant my mother had 14 or 15 deliveries but only four of us three brothers and one sister survived i was born at nerukaw my maternal house speaking about my childhood i may say that i was a very weak child with very delicate health and frequent fits of epilepsy which beyond ayurvedic medicines was considered fit to be treated by mandravadam or spiritual healing did it heal actually a certain somayaji part a nambudri brahmin who had performed the somayaga right treated me with his mantras and magical incantations a gold amulet containing a copper plate inscribed with a secret diagram or yantra was tied around my waist with a black string it was also prescribed that every month at the pradosham eve that is on the 14th day of the black half of the month i should be presented at a particular shiva temple for a peculiar sort of worship dhara worship i cannot vouch say for the effectiveness of these modes of treatment but it is a fact that i got completely cured though my delicate health continued to cause deep anxiety to my parents for considerable time to come now could you remember anything special by your personal experience of your early childhood days well i distinctly remember a, an incident a sort of my first encounter with death my own death my mother used to go to a temple tank to take her evening bath and i used to accompany her the women folk of the neighborhood would sit on the steps of the tank and chat while we the urchins should splash in the knee deep water warmed with day long exposure to sun one day as the dusk deepened i drifted unnoticed by anyone into deeper and deeper water i felt waves passing over my head i tried hard to breathe and in that attempt ingested considerable amount of water then somebody noticed my absence in the bathing ghat a hue and cry was raised people came rushing from all sides some instituted a search under water and i was discovered standing erect with both hands raised above my head as though in a gesture of supplication once lifted from the water i vomited most of the ingested liquid and was my normal self in a couple of days probably this was my first encounter with my own death so we understand there was a spiritual tradition an agricultural tradition even a bit of commercial tradition but not much of a scholarly tradition in your making up were you self taught my family could not uh, boast of much scholarship as i said my father knew elements of sanskrit nobody in my maternal family had attained to any pretensions of scholarship i was educated in the local primary school and uh, when i passed the fourth standard the natural thing would have been to join a high school where english was the medium of instruction but at that time my elder brother was studying in the high school and uh, high school education was not free it uh, cost about 5 uh, rupees a month being not in an affluent position my father could not afford to pay for the education of m- even my elder brother he was a brilliant student so got a half fee concession still for the other half we had to go to some of our richer relatives in these circumstances it was impossible for my father to send me to the english high school but sanskrit education was available freely in our neighborhood in some of the nambudri families wealthy nambudri families there were sanskrit tutors appointed 
to teach young Nambudiris. These tutors were willing to provide Sanskrit education to others also, free of cost. Do you remember your first teacher of Sanskrit? My first teacher is uh, a great scholar, Sri Keshavan Elayad, Sri Kotanat Keshavan Elayad. He had his education in the celebrated Sanskrit college at Triponatra. He studied Nyaya, passed the Boshna examination, but with taking up any job, he came back to his home and began to practice his traditional profession, the priesthood in Nair families, Keshav Nalayat. Along with that, he also began to teach some students Sanskrit. And I was one of his earliest and uh, perhaps the most favorite students. Is that how you brought to Tripunudra? I studied under him. Then, when a Sanskrit school was started at Piruvanam, we, that is my teacher and his students, en bloc, joined this school. We formed part of the nucleus of this school. In this school, I studied about uh, five years. That is how I picked up the elements of Sanskrit language and Sanskrit literature. From this school, I graduated into the Sanskrit College at Triponatra. We have heard you cited the feat of no lesser person than Parikshit Dumbaran, the great Can't patron. say, because Parikshit Dumbaran had never been a teacher in the college. Dumbaran was a great uh, Nyaya scholar and uh, occasionally he used to teach students who sought his help. But I took up Sanskrit grammar for my special subject in Sanskrit college. And the teacher was Sri Shankara Narayana Shastrigar, a very erudite scholar in grammar and uh, allied subjects. He taught me for about four years. Before that, uh, two years I studied under certain others, Mr. Damodar Nambiar and uh, Mr. Ukkandavarya. So, I studied Sanskrit grammar for six years at Sanskrit College Triponatra. During these years, I had frequent occasions to come into the notice of Parish Tambaran, who took a very affectionate, uh, he considered me as uh, one among his affectionate students. So, after I left Sanskrit College, we keep the contact with each other until the end of his years. He had a great uh, consideration, affection and regard for me. We have heard you, you were able to impress him in your teenage with some Vakyartha discussions and he gave you some presents. Oh, that is uh, another story. The Sanskrit College at Triponatra was established by the ex highness Sri Ramavarma, who left kingship and uh, stayed in Trichur the rest of his this life all India Radio and uh, came to be known as Rajarshi. He established this Sanskrit college as a memorial to his teacher, Sheshacharya. And to begin with, it was called Sheshacharya Padachala. Oh, that was the original name? Oh, that was the original name. After he left kingship, after several years, he came to Triponatra and stayed for a few days at Arnavalam. Usually he was staying at Trichur. So while he was at Arnavalam, all the students and teachers of Sanskrit College went to see him and to pay him their regards, respects. At that occasion, a Vakyartha or a discourse on a Sutra of Pandi was uh, organized and I was selected to give that discourse. It was during the first year when I had joined the college. Do you remember the topic? Well, I expounded the Sutra Arthava Dathadir Apratya Pradipadigam, the definition of Pradipadiga by Panini. I could uh, manage well and uh, His Highness, Royal Highness was very pleased with me. He spoke very highly of uh, my talents and also gave me a present. What was that? It was a Sir Garland, a very big garland which uh, we had presented to him. He gave me as a present and uh, he blessed me. We would like to know about your acquaintance with Pandit and Pudwal Master. Sri Achyotapudwal 
പണ്ഡിത രാജ അശ്വ പൊതുവാൾ വാസ് ദി ന്യായ പ്രൊഫസർ ഓഫ് സയൻസ്ക്രിറ്റ് കോളേജ് ദർ വാസ് അനദർ പ്രൊഫസർ മിസ്റ്റർ രാമ വാര്യർ ഹി വാസ് ഓൾസോ ടീച്ചിങ് ന്യായ ദീസ് ടു ടീച്ചേഴ്സ് ടോട്ട് മീ എലമെൻസ് ഓഫ് സയൻസ്ക്രിറ്റ് ലോജിക് ന്യായ ശാസ്ത്ര സോ ഐ ഹാഡ് ദി ഗ്രേറ്റ് ഫോർച്യൂൺ ഓഫ് സ്റ്റഡിങ് അണ്ടർ ദം ദൻ വൺ അനദർ പേഴ്സൺ വിത്ത് ഹും ഐ ഹാഡ് കമ്മിൻ ടു ഇൻറ്റിമേറ്റ് കോൺടാക്ട് വാസ് പണ്ഡിത രാജ രാമപ്രിഷാലി ദ ഗ്രേറ്റ് വലിയ രാമപ്രിഷാലി who had written a very extensive commentary on dhanyaloka lojana he was a great scholar he is also a commentator of shakuntala along with uh, maharaja parishit tambaran these two people ramprasad and parishit tambaran were supposed to be bosom friends so i had the good fortune to study under him higher texts in sahitya for example kavya prakasha dhanyaloka rasangara and other texts so you took your basic degree in grammar bhushan yes, uh, bhushan degree i took in grammar I would like to know something about the students and their way of life and the influences, political and social influences which worked down the minds of the students in those days. At that time, Sanskrit College was a very small institution. There were about uh, 120 or 150 students in all. It was divided into two portions. There was a Kavya section extending six years and a Shastra section extending another six years. the main disciplines of study were nyaya and vyakarana which lasted for 6 years but after 2 years of uh, instruction students could take if they so wanted either vedanta or ayurveda or jyotisha and uh, have some phala shastra for their livelihood but i studied sanskrit grammar for 6 years continuously at a stretch we used to stay in the sanskrit college building itself Did you have to pay fee? No. On the other hand, we were given some stipend. So, during the first two years, the monthly stipend was about uh, six rupees. Then eight rupees, nine or ten rupees. Those like were that. big sums. In those years, this amount was sufficient for the student to meet his expenditures, his livelihood and his food, boarding and lodging and also books. that was a great attraction in fact i was able to study in the sanskrit college because of this type and we used to live in the college building itself most of us cooked our own food washed our own clothes and the entire time was devoted either to these activities or to study the teaching hours were limited to say 2 hours a day the rest of the time we used to repeat whatever the teacher said during the class time our teachers wanted us to repeat 10 lessons every day but uh, we did not uh, do that much most often we repeated three lessons the lesson of day for yesterday yesterday and today will be repeated in small groups of three or four persons one lesson will be repeated by one person the next uh, another lesson by another person like that there will be questions and answers and all those things so that way whatever we learnt were made thorough and it was impossible to forget uh, these things even after years this is the ancient uh, system of memorizing things we were taught very little which had no direct relation with uh, the subject we studied for example when we studied sanskrit grammar perhaps we learned uh, we studied one or two texts in literature or nyaya shastra or allied subjects but uh, other languages were completely left out the scheme was not uh, extensive it was very narrow but it was intensive that was the old system of uh, studying shastra what about the that. extra curricular activities of the students uh, very little some of them played some basketball or something during the evening times but otherwise most of the time was uh, spent on repeating the lessons reading and uh, just chatting and doing the other chores like uh, cooking and uh, washing and all those things i think the great poet vairopulli was working there in tripunathra at that time he was studying in maharaja's college at that time then he became a teacher and uh, when i left the college he came in 
as a teacher and uh, every morning he used to come to Sanskrit college and uh, to play some game, shuttlecock or something like that, with uh, the clerk in Sanskrit college. So at that time we used to meet him. He was a budding poet, very famous even in those days and uh, we used to look up to him with uh, considerable admiration. Had you begun to write poems in those days? In Sanskrit college, we had two associations. One, an association in Sanskrit and uh, another in Malayalam. These were weekly associations. We used to gather, read essays, speak extempo and also present poems and uh, other literary pieces like the samasya, something like that, translations and all those things. That way, many of us got experience in writing poems, essays and other literary forms. But serious writing I started only after leaving Sanskrit College. Did you have any political associations in those days? It was impossible to think about uh, politics in those days because there were no politics in the state of Cochin. Of course, the freedom struggle was raging in the Malabar area, but only distant uh, echoes came to the placid uh, air of Cochin state. But some of our classmates had participated in political struggle in Malabar area. Now, who are they? One was Mr. Tavi Parameshra here who is at present in Delhi. He had participated in the freedom movement at Calicut. Then some others were also deeply involved in the freedom struggle. They used to wear khadar and also to subscribe to Congress. I mean, they were foreign members of Congress. That way, many of us also took an interest in what was going on in the political field, beyond the borders of the state. We also subscribe to Congress. I started wearing khadar when I could earn enough to buy khadar clothing and uh, raised small amounts among ourselves by subscription and presented it to some of the volunteers and the jathas which passed through Tripunathara in connection with temple entry. That way, our sympathies with the freedom struggle, even in those days. But uh, students' unions were not known in those years and other forms of uh, political agitation were also not in vogue. So after leaving the college, you were drawn to Gandhi and the national movement and the terrorist movement in due course. Uh, it, sir? As students, we were interested in some other programs of Congress. The Hindi movement had by that time taken some route in the state of Cochin. Sri Devadud Vidyarthi had come to Tripunathara. A Hindi college was established there, something like that. And we were enthusiastic students of Hindi. Through Hindi, we got into touch with other aspects of the political struggle. Perhaps Hindi was the our main role to political awakening. Have you met Gandhi? I have uh, met him several times. He came to Tripunathara and uh, during one of his uh, early Kerala visits, one morning, very early, he came to the premises of the cooperative bank where there was a small meeting. After addressing the people for about uh, five minutes, he wanted contributions to the Harijan Fund. At that time, we used to get uh, shining bright coins in Tripunathara from the treasury. So I had uh, collected a few pies, copper coins, and this collection I presented to Gandhiji. What was his response? Well, he smiled, that is all. Then, after some years, I met him in Arnavalam. But uh, when he visited Madras in 
was it 1945 in connection with the jubilee celebrations of hindi prayar sabha i was in madras i was also associated with hindi prayar sabha there i became a volunteer and i could accompany him to several functions four or five days so i was uh, just uh, following him like a shadow from yes, one function to another and i have very vivid memories of those days of my closeness proximity to the great man could you remember any special incidents for the mention i had passed the rashtrabhasha vichara the examination in hindi but at that time i did not uh, take the certificate then after several years when gandhi ji came to madras he presented the certificates in a convocation and i took my certificate from him direct giving the certificate to me he looked at me and told me read well this i remember quite distinctly perhaps he was reading into you i don't know <laughs> and after leaving the college you embarked on the teaching career or the political after, career after leaving sanskrit college i found myself at a dead end because my education did not prepare me for any job other than that of a teacher of sanskrit in a high school in cochin state the examination which i passed in cochin in tripunatra was not recognized outside the borders of cochin state so i could not get a job either in travancore or in british malabar or in any other place the posts of sanskrit teachers were few in cochin state and uh, those posts had already been filled so i could not uh, get any job i could of course give tuition to students but uh, that way i could not hope to earn enough to support myself somehow or other i stayed in tripunatra giving tuitions and also preparing to appear for the ceremony examination of the university of madras studying under the great uh, scholar ram prasadi thus i spent one year there during which i also got uh, a short vacancy appointment in the sanskrit college as a tutor incidentally how much money would you require in those days to make both ends meet for okay. a student like you for a sumptuous meal or two meals in a tolerably good hotel in tripunatra the monthly payment was only 4 rupees at that time so that way life was very cheap but even those 4 rupees were not available the country was passing through a very great economic depression well the war days just before the war days yes. depression uh, the great economic depression was there and uh, people had no money and the commodities did not fetch any price after one year i got a job in a sanskrit school at chowera the pay was 12 rupees a month but at that time it was a sumptuous salary so i worked about one year at uh, chowera and uh, passed my ceremony examination meanwhile teaching and uh, appeared as a private student and passed the ceremony examination uh, was it equivalent to ma no Even? at that time it was not it was only a title examination but it was this title examination was recognized outside the state of cochin also so i could uh, get a job in the state of travancore with this degree i had come into contact with uh, swami agavanand of uh, the ramoshram mission some years back swami ji had come to pudukad near my maternal home and established an ashrama there then he left it and uh, went to banaras and uh, when he returned from banaras instead of going to pudukad he went to kaladi and established another ashram there and along with the ashram he had also established a sanskrit high school there so when i passed the ceremony examination swami ji invited me to join him as the headmaster of the sanskrit high school how long were you there i was there for 3 years do you remember any colleagues 
fellow uh, teachers at that at uh, Kaladi. Mr. Sankaranarayana Pillai was the headmaster when I came there. He had not passed the Mahopadhyaya examination. That was why I was uh, asked to take up the headmastership. And Mr. Kurusheri Gopalu Pillai was there. He was a good writer and author. He had uh, three or four Sanskrit pieces credit. He was also a very efficient linguist. Kurusheri Gopalu Pillai. So for three years I worked in Kaladi. In 1942, when the freedom movement of the August movement burst out, I resigned that job and joined this struggle. What made you resign, in fact? As I told you, my education prepared myself only for one career, the career of a Sanskrit teacher. That was not a very rewarding career at that time. Sanskrit, of course, was not in the mainstream of national life. There were a few Sanskrit schools here and there. And uh, normally, poor students who could not afford to pay the fee drifted to these schools. During my student years, I had been a very eager student of Hindi. And as I told you, through the Hindi movement, I had established certain contacts with the freedom in our country. I was more and more drawn to the ideology, the Gandhian ideology. And uh, as many of the young men of those years, I thought that the, the greatest ideal for which persons like us could strive was the freedom of the country. Gradually this conviction grew in me. The ideology of communism also began to spread in the country in those years. And many of my friends were attracted to the communist ideology. Who were they? Some of them at least? My own brother, Shankaran Guti, and Mr. K. V. K. Warrior, who was a great friend of mine. P. Baskaran was there. Several others. Some of uh, my classmates in the Sanskrit college also became very active workers in the Communist Party. Now, I have read somewhere there was an anthem, a problem with an anthem which was sung in the school. The anthem that was praising the king and you changed it to... Well, that was in Kaldi. Every day started with the Vanji Samangalam, Vanji Bhumi Pade Chiram, Sanji Dhavam Jai Kenam, that a song. That was obligatory for all schools in Travancore. But when I joined the Sanskrit school at Kaldi, I told them that uh, we can have this anthem, if necessary, at the end of the day, we will start with a prayer or something like that. And I composed three verses containing the Vedantic Advaitic idea, which Swamiji also approved. And we gradually, we abandoned the Vanchisha Mangalam and uh, substituted this prayer in its place. What was the attitude of the Swamiji regarding Sw the national movement? Swamiji was struggling hard to get the ashram established. He had very few supporters in that area and uh, for everything he had to depend upon the government. That way he did not uh, encourage the national movement or the propaganda of uh, Congress within the premises. He was also slightly afraid that uh, our activities may stand in the way of uh, his achieving his objective. That way, when I resigned and uh, went out, he was greatly relieved, in fact. <laughs> and where did you go after resigning? After resigning my job, I went to Ernaulam. I met uh, Mr. Panambali Govindamanon, who was an active worker there. I had uh, known him before. Professor Chandrahasan was also there. Chandrahasan was the professor of Hindi in Maharaja's College and uh, he knew me well. But uh, people there did not know what to do. I reached Arnavalam on the 11th of August 1942. There were spontaneous demonstrations by students and all those things. But nobody knew what to do. Then I resigned my job and uh, went to Trichur because I thought that uh, I could work near my house 
the idea was not to offer any satyagraha or to go to jail something like that gandhi ji had made it plain that this was not the usual law breaking and jail going this was a fight to the finish do or die something like that incidentally is that the the theme of your august wind a leaf flying in the august wind well that uh, poem reflects the general trend of that time then along with uh, some other friends we began to work in and around trichur there were student strikes also so demonstrations i went to idingalaguda and other places addressed meetings organized demonstrations after some days we got some information some instructions from bombay and uh, other places the idea was to paralyze the british government for which communications had to be disrupted if possible bridges had to be destroyed something like that but the technology for doing these things we did not know and there was nobody to guide us what we knew was uh, just uh, break the laws and go to jail at that time a group of persons from bombay came to kerala dr k b menon and his friends mr kaisar nair mathai manuran and others professor chandrahasan got me introduced to these people oh, they were that pratibhadi bhayangara acha uh, that he came afterwards chandrahasan introduced me to dr k b menon they wanted to publish a legal journal weekly journal in support of the agitation there is underground underground paper which was called swatantra bharatam do you keep any issues of those papers well, i have uh, copies of two issues now i had not uh, kept any issue with me because it was very highly dangerous especially for a person connected with the movement i joined mr keshav nair who was in charge of producing this paper and for three or four months we produced this journal on and off where was it published from from several places wherever we could get it published wherever we could get it printed we got it printed one or two issues were printed at palghat then we had a hand press hand composing was done at a telicheri for some issues and the compost matter was taken to kurg to markara where in a press we got it printed so that way the printing was done in several places and it was distributed throughout kerala how was it financed by the bombay group they got uh, financial support from several resources 